All right, today we're going to be tearing into a Honda 4Trax 300 motor. This is a two-wheel drive, um, but uh, four-wheel drive's not a whole lot different. I'll explain that when we get there. First thing we're going to do is pull this top end apart. So we're going to pull the cylinder head, we're going to pull the piston and the cylinder off. So we've got a handful of bolts up top here that we've got to remove. And then we want to start by pulling the cam chain tensioner. And that's two 8mm bolts that, um, that hold this tensioner on. And to put this tensioner back together, um, or back in, you want to take that center bolt out, and I'll show you that when I get it off here. This is what it, this is what it looks like. We have some fuel down in the, the cylinder, so we're going to have kind of a mess here as we're taking it apart. But that's what the tensioner looks like. And to clean, or to, um, to take this cylinder, excuse me, take this cam chain tensioner apart, just pull that 8 millimeter bolt. There's a spring-loaded um, rod in there that we can reset. So now we're going to go ahead and pull. And if you watched our other videos there, we've, we're have we doing a couple different service things, valve click, uh, checks, stuff like that. Um, we've pulled these caps already off. So we've got 10 millimeter bolts all the way around this head here, and then a couple 8 millimeters. Got a couple of these 10 millimeters that are tight. And there's no need for them to be this tight. And then an oil line here that we'll pull off. And that's got a banjo bolt, so make sure you put the right bolt back in this one. Which just means it's got a hole going through it. Allow oil to come up through there. Here's the rest of your oil line. I'm gonna pull that off. And there's all three. The center one is not a banjo bolt. Your other two are. Same style of bolt that would be on your brake lines. Fluid running through there. So we've got all the 10 millimeters off. We're gonna pull the eight millimeters off. And I, my adapter broke, so I'm gonna have to bear with me. Because I've gotta loosen these. Alright, we just have three 8 millimeters. I don't, I don't even think these are supposed to be 8 millimeters. Although 10 millimeters may not have fit down beside this inspection window. So we got these pulled off here. Just make sure there's nothing else there. This will um, come up now. Got a rotor, uh, plastic mallet here. Tap on it, and that'll pull right up. Sometimes you get a bolt that a thread or two is still on there giving you a little grief but all right those are all off there's your rockers on the bottom there pull your rockers off got flat screws uh, I won't pull them out just for the sake of time but two flat screws right here and those those will need to come off for your rocker rods to be pulled out and then your actual rockers can come out we'll drop down from there so got your cam chain there and that's going to be what's holding us up next so what i do um, i pull this 10 millimeter allen cap off here you can see where that fuel's been in here it's it's really dried this out but we've got our cap off here now we can take a 17 millimeter and uh You'll, you'll be able to see here, we're turning our cam. Now, what I'm gonna do is remove this 10 millimeter on this sprocket. And then now I'm gonna turn this with this crankshaft over here, this socket directly on that crankshaft, and then take this one off. Now that cam sprocket is free. We're able to lift that cam out of there without that cam chain holding us up. 
We're just gonna set that cam chain down beside it to get this all out of here. And then there is your cam right there with your sprocket. I'm just gonna put these bolts back on. These are just a small 10 millimeter bolt. So nothing special, but you wanna make sure you don't get anything too long on there in there. There's the cam there. Then we're gonna go ahead and pull this cylinder head off. We got 14 millimeter bolts holding this on, then a couple Allens. Impact socket barely gets down in there. Might be best to have a, a regular socket to get those. Impact socket's just thicker, and so it's hard to get in between there. All right, those are off, and I've got three Allens that we'll need to remove. Sometimes this can be a challenge because this motor's kind of flopping everywhere. That wasn't planned. Um, ooh, these are tight. I'll hold it up against something, we might be able to. The other thing, we might be able to put a socket on there. Sometimes using a socket, they just uh, allows them to spin a little bit easier, which isn't good. Supposed to be torqued down. I didn't look at the torque specs, but it's supposed to be tight. I'm not sure they're supposed to be this tight. All right, we got one more to go here. All right, those are off. They're loose. Those three out. Now this head is ready to come off. We've got the cylinder head off there. There's your two valves. You got your exhaust here, your intake there. Bottom of that dome there looks to be in really good shape. We'll pull that apart and inspect that. Watch for those videos to come. Now I've got your cylinder here. You've got two eight millimeter bolts along downside this cam chain area. They're, they're eight millimeters. got your guide here. And these guides will come up now. With that, that fuel that you saw I had in there, it's causing some issues. It's kind of dried everything out. And this guide, you can see it's, it's paint's crack in there. This guide's going to be no good. I'm just going to lift this up with a pair of side dikes. Here is your head gasket here. The head gasket sits uh, directly below the head. The base gasket sits below the cylinder. And we'll go over that as we're putting the motor back together. And those are trash. You never want to reuse gaskets like that. There's your cam chain tensioner or guide there. Your um, This is the guide that, that is opposite again, the tensioner. So the other guide here will pull apart when we, after we get 
to this bottom end. But we're ready to pull this cylinder off now. And this guide knot chain can sometimes get in the way. There's your base gasket there. That's a paper gasket. All right. I'm going to spin this. I'm going to hold this cam chain. You never want to let that cam chain drop down in there while you're spinning the motor because it could bind up and break your case. But just to show you how to get this piston off of here, I spun that motor up. And now I'm going to take a pick or a small screwdriver. I'm going to get in here. There's a little groove beside your piston pin. There's a circlip in there that holds that pin in. Just kind of pry it up with an angled, uh, angled pick like that, and then you can just push your piston pin through there. Then to get that back on, just take your your clip, and I take it, hold it in my hands this way, if you can see that, and just slide it in this way. And what I do, once I get it pretty close to in there, I take my pick then and I kind of just push it into place. And that pushes the pin in there. That piston looks in really good condition. These walls aren't scored up, or the sides there, the skirts. And then the, the cylinder, you just want to inspect this really good, the walls, to make sure there's no grooves in there, make sure there's no wear. Um, they can, a lot, of, a lot of times, it's just a, just a smallish groove can be, um, you can hone it. Uh, sometimes that'll make it good enough, but sometimes they do need bore.